hope you gotta put this together I've never played a game like Deathloop before. More accurately, I've played a lot of games that are a little bit like it, Dishonored, Hitman, Outer Wilds, and even Dark Souls among them, but never anything that fits so many interesting ideas together to create something so fascinatingly unique. It's Ever Repeating Day, Doomed to Loop Until You Can Break It by Murdering 8 Targets, is a playground for impactful gunplay, absorbing investigation work, satisfying experimentation, and even tense multiplayer standoffs. Developer Arcane Studios' precise calibration of these pieces make Deathloop an intricately built clockwork machine that doesn't so much quietly hum, but rather confidently roars. Your eight targets, known as Visionaries, have taken up residence on Black Reef, a cold and grey island made appealingly vibrant by dashes of 1960s fashion, architecture and technology. Awakening every morning on its freezing shore is your protagonist Colt, a consistently amusing and understandably sweary gunslinger whose amnesia prevents him from knowing how he got here or for how long he's been looping. Surprisingly for the scenario, there's no ticking clock snapping at your heels as you try to end the cycle by taking all your targets out before the day resets and they're all resurrected. Deathloop's smartest decision is to split its day into four time periods – morning, noon, afternoon and evening – and you can remain in each of them for as long or as short a time as you'd like. You choose one of Black Reef's four unique districts to visit in each period, and you can take your time to thoroughly explore and crack some of Deathloop's most elusive optional secrets without the fear of time running out. That's not to say there aren't complications though. Your targets are spread out across those time periods and locations, so much so it's initially impossible to kill them all before the day runs out. As such, you need to herd them together so that you can murder more than one at a time. To achieve this, you must conduct an investigation into their lives and schedules that took me roughly 20 hours, uncovering Black Reef's exciting secrets and eventually concluding by orchestrating a satisfying solution that ensures every single one of them dies before midnight strikes. Despite using a live-die repeat structure, it's best to think of Deathloop as a temporal metroidvania rather than anything close to a roguelike. Its chief currency is information. As you chase down objectives and unearth new leads, you'll discover clues that help you to unlock doors and exciting new opportunities in areas you've previously visited, both in time and space. Excitingly, the details of the four locations shift depending on the time you visit them. As the day goes on, the island becomes increasingly anarchic, as the residents grow rowdier and smash up furniture, graffiti walls and even crash a car into a building. In the afternoon, a snowstorm redecorates Black Reef with a white blanket, and the evening is host to an exuberant party that dominates the Updarm district. Between those big visual changes are subtle, more meaningful alterations, such as changing enemy patrols, water freezing to provide new pathways, or a secret apartment window that only opens in the afternoon. These changes help create a constant sense of discovery all throughout Deathloop's day. Once you've played through all four time periods, the day resets and you start again. Dying will also send you right back to breakfast time, although Colt's supernatural abilities allow him to survive death twice per time period, which prevents things from getting frustrating. Either way, each reset also strips your inventory of every weapon, power and upgrade you've picked up, forcing you to start afresh each day. Saving you from despair is the infusion system, which allows you to permanently bind items to Colt so that they survive the loop. It requires spending Residuum, a resource found around Black Reef which is rare enough to force considered purchases, but in enough supply that each new loop will consistently bolster your arsenal. This system system cleverly encourages you to vary your approach, allowing you to taste Deathloop's many flavours without committing until you're ready. Each day involves picking up a new selection of items. Trinkets, of which there are dozens, are items that allow you to make meaningful alterations to both your weapons and to Colt, such as the ability to reload in an instant or move without making noise. The loop's cycling buffet of options allows you to test and discover new equipment, which will go on to inspire your infusion choices. Over time, you'll build up a collection of your favourite items, from which you choose a loadout before heading into the next location. While you may lose equipment at the end of a run, a reset never disrupts your investigation. You hold on to every single discovery you've made so far in your quest log and intel files. This means you rarely have to repeat the same activity twice, which eliminates a frustration many other time loop games suffer from. After a heavily tutorialised introduction, the whole island and time loop is opened up to you to explore as you please, any district in any order. You are provided with starting leads for each of the eight visionaries, which unfold as linear quest lines, but how you pursue them 
them is entirely up to you. You could opt to tug on each new thread as you find them, hopping between leads to cover as much ground as possible in a single loop, which provides a gratifying sense of efficiency. Or you could chase down a single lead, skipping time periods and locations in dogged pursuit of a specific part of the puzzle. This remarkable freedom helps fulfil the investigator fantasy. There's a genuine sense that each choice you make helps narrow the search. Deathloop's story is told through the classic formats of audio logs, diaries and computer messages, all of which are fantastically flavourful. If you don't fully absorb every note and connect the many dots yourself though, Colt's personal story, a fun and twisty history that intertwines with the lives of his targets and acts as Deathloop's overarching plot, might not quite come together. And without it, the short concluding chapter can feel not just abrupt, but rather thin. As much as I appreciate Arcane having confidence in us to make these connections ourselves, Colt's story feels like something that should have been served up in small milestone meals throughout the loops in a way that can't possibly be missed, rather than scattered like cookie crumbs across the world to be overlooked by those who just want to get on with the next justified murder. The precision engineering of this complex, looping world is held in balance by Deathloop's combat system, which is a delightfully raucous affair that roars like a dragon with ballistic breath. If you prefer to go loud, you can paint the walls with the insides of Black Reef's violent thugs, using a small but well-tuned array of fantastically heavy weapons. Among the best are the Pepper Mill, a sputtering machine gun that feels as if it were wrenched from the undercarriage of a fighter plane, and the Four Pounder, a pistol that fires with the force of a battleship's cannon made miniature. Despite acquiring these trusty favourites, I constantly found myself switching between the entire armoury as I planned around different tactics. If you're playing on PS5 as I did, each gun produces a different effect in the dual senses triggers and haptic vibrations, generating a deeply enjoyable sense of force with every fight. These guns are joined by a library of slabs, which are supernatural powers stolen from the corpses of visionaries. These can be used in combination with your weapons in the environment to approach situations in your preferred manner, and all routes feel robust no matter if you choose to go loud or quiet. Pairing the teleportation slab called shift, with the invisibility of ether for example, allows you to zip around unseen, picking off stragglers with a silenced nail gun. The Carnesis slab, meanwhile, can be used to levitate groups and repeatedly slam them into walls until there's no life left in them. The links between your weapons and powers make Deathloop's combat a hotbed for joyful experimentation. The system truly comes alive though when you learn how trinkets can harmonise the individual components of your loadout. The right combination can create a whole new playstyle. You might become a hands-off hacker capable of remotely locking down rooms and take out targets with gun turrets that heal you with each kill. Or perhaps a master navigator who can double jump up onto balconies and magically switch places with enemies. This all has a deck building appeal to it, as you mix and match your inventory to craft kits tailored for delight for shootouts, sneaky infiltrations, or a hybrid of the two. Over time, you'll develop a character build refined in anticipation of the final perfect loop. Does that sound too easy? There is, of course, a catch. Doing her best to ensure you never make it as far as the final loop is Juliana Blake, the only visionary who ever takes a direct interest in Colt and operates on his level. She constantly chats with you over the radio, and your boisterous banter with her imbues this complex mechanical game with an endearingly human personality. But the biggest difference between Juliana and her peers is that where the other visionaries will only get aggressive if you invade their home turf, Juliana is a restless and free-roaming hunter. She'll seek you out and crash your investigation party, turning up like a mini-boss fight out of the blue. Juliana's enhanced aggression, resilience, and ability to disguise herself as generic enemies means she's a welcome tangent in Deathloop's predictable and repeating patterns. That's the case in single-player mode, at least. Juliana serves a greater purpose, in that she can be controlled by another player who can invade your game. This twist on the PvP mechanic popularised by Dark Souls turns her into an entirely different beast. Naturally more intelligent than her AI stand-in, a real Juliana provides a more authentic sense of cat and mouse to the proceedings. This chase is a thrill, and a challenge that turns the ability to replay the loop after the credits have rolled into a much more alluring endgame scenario. Thankfully, if you detest the sound of a randomer jeopardising your perfectly arranged kill, invaders can be entirely locked out of your game, or limited to just friends, with the simple flick of a 
a menu switch. Playing as Juliana has a different rhythm. Without Colt's resurrection ability, every wrong move could be your last, and you'll need to kill your target three times to ensure he's dead for good. Deception becomes the key part of your toolkit. There's a quiet thrill in switching appearances with an NPC and blending in. The map knowledge you've learned over many loops helps pinpoint ambush locations in places you know Colt is likely heading to, which is a gratifying reward for mastering Deathloop's level design. PvP is by no means an essential mode, but for anyone as similarly taken by Deathloop's combat as I am, it's an opportunity to discover even more methods of creative murder. Despite its seemingly endless complexities, Deathloop is one of the most confidently designed games I've ever played. Arcane Studios has crafted a world made of ideas linked by meaningful connections. Time influences space, space influences tactics, and tactics influence loadouts. Its unique, high-concept ideas around time loops and non-linear investigation work are implemented with elegance, making its systems feel effortless to navigate, learn from, and ultimately master. A new high watermark for Arcane and developers of similar games to aspire to, Death Deathloop is a game like no other. For more, be sure to read the full written review on IGN.com. You may also be interested in our interview with Deathloop's director about how Arcane designs its games. 